Today's social media segment is brought to you by Alford and Associates for all of your insurance needs. CIS, Cardiovascular Institute of the South, the highest quality cardiovascular care available. Barker Honda, the Barker family tradition of quality. Doman Chevrolet for Car Bravo's Wawarama sales event. You can get 0% financing on select certified models or get $1,000 consumer cash on every certified half ton truck. That's right, you can get $1,000 on every Ford, Ram, or Chevrolet certified truck. We say yes when others say no. AJ Doman Chevrolet at the foot of the Market City Bridge in Berwick. Welcome back to Bike Time. Harry McCullough here. We're wrapping up uh, the session uh, with Barrel Amity, District 51's Barrel Amity. Let's let's finish off talking about the uh, Amity rules and uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Amity bills and, and things that you had your hand in, in during the session. Oh, sure, sure. Um, there were several bills that I carried that passed that probably didn't make national news, but still, <laughs> and a few that did, yeah. really. Um, one of them was the Central Bank Digital Currency Bill. I did hear from news sources out of the state and maybe even one out of the country about that one. Um, central bank digital currency would be a currency that the government establishes and the government holds and sets all the rules. And so the government dictates how you and I could spend our money. In fact, if we spend it in ways the government doesn't like, the government could say, you can't spend any more this week. Right. So if they say, Harry bought too much gas this week. That's not good for the environment. We're not going to let Harry buy gas again for another week. That could happen. So this is why people are watching very closely what happens with CDBCs uh, around the world. So far under the current administration, the federal government is moving forward with plans to have right. a CDBC here in the United States. And um, I don't know at what point they could roll it out, but I do know that pilot programs and testing has already taken place. And so could be any time. So this bill that I brought was a simple surgical strike. It puts one little line in the uh, Uniform Commercial Code that dictates how central bank digital currency could not be used for deposit or collateral in a commercial deposit account. And what does that mean to me or to you? Nothing much. Um, if a central bank digital currency rolled out tomorrow, we would actually be free to utilize it if we want to as individuals. But this is a, a, something in the commercial code. The reason that we put it there is because if the government rolls one out, this gives Louisiana a window of opportunity for the legislature to come in and determine what the rules will be in Louisiana. So this would enable us to be able to keep Louisiana citizens and our money safe and, and keep us from being under the dictates and the whims of a federal government. Famously, China that, that might have, you know, if you're not doing things right, they'll they'll put a monitor or the Canadian truckers, but I think they did that too. Yes, so, yeah. those were yeah, big those examples are, in the headlines. You know, you would never think that a government can do that. Well. <laughs> we didn't think we could lock down either. That's right, that's right. <laughs> so um, let's see, other bills that I brought. One that I'm excited about was a bill that allows for public schools to hire or accept as volunteers chaplains in the schools. And so these chaplains would not take the place of school counselors at all, but they would be another tool that would walk alongside and, and help in situations, especially if there's any sort of a, a, an emergency or catastrophe. But as you know, you could have an emergency that's statewide or, or even at the local school level, you know, an um, active shooter situation, for example. Those are things we all think of. But if you have a chaplain at a school on a regular basis, what about when the, when the trouble is personal? What about the child who arrives at school after having had an argument with mom and dad and they're just not in a, a good way? Um, so little personal times where you might just want to sit and talk with a chaplain, it would be beneficial to have one available. And so this bill would allow for that. And um, another bill that I'm excited about was a bill that says that schools cannot discriminate among students based on their vaccine status. So right now under current law, 
the, the schools are supposed to require certain vaccines of students. And if a student has an objection, either religious, philosophical, or medical, to a particular vaccine, or, or even to all vaccines, they simply submit that in writing to the school, and that gets put in a file. And it really just sits there unless and until there's an outbreak, a declared outbreak of a certain disease at the school or in the community. So let's take measles, for example. If there was a measles outbreak in Terrebonne Parish, then the schools could look through the files and find any student who has never had the measles and never had the measles vaccine and ask them to stay home, to not come to school until the outbreak is over. And that's what our vaccine laws, our student vaccine laws say right now. The bill that I got passed doesn't change any of that. The bill was written because during the whole pandemic, we saw schools that were picking and choosing and discriminating between students based, based on their vaccine status, especially their COVID vaccine status. And that looked like teachers making seating charts based on who's had what shot or who hasn't, or students being told you can't play on this sports team unless or until you go get this shot. And none of that is legal. And so this bill clarifies that in law. But all vaccines, not just COVID. Correct. Smallpox, measles, any diphtheria, vaccines. all of them. I yes, um, this bill would apply to any vaccines. The only authority that the schools have concerning a student's vaccine status is whether or not to ask them to stay out of school if when there's, there's, there's a declared outbreak. Right. Other than that, that's it. All right. Because I know when your kids go off to college, they have to have certain vaccines to go in a dormitory and that kind of stuff too. Yes, and, and those vaccine standards, I mean, um, requirements are set all the way from daycare through college. Right. So it's, it's all ages, it's just student, whatever mm -hmm. age that student is. Mm -hmm. uh, no, real, real interesting stuff. And, and so you got most of these passed then? Those are bills that did pass, yes. Okay. Yes. It and um, I had one more, it was a resolution. It was asking the Department of Health to study the relationship between SIDS deaths and immunization status of the baby that died. Mm. And so I'm looking forward to that report and we're supposed to have that sometime, I think in January. Is that something they would not do normally? Well, they actually are required every year to issue a report on infant death, infant mortality. And um, they also run the, the Lynx system, which is the system where we track vaccines for people from, from birth to old age. Right. And so they already have all the information. The report just, I mean, the study request is just for them to take that information, put it together and present it to us. Where it can go across yeah. ways. Well, uh, yeah. Beryl, it's an interesting time. Uh, we appreciate your time here with us to let us know what's going on. Sure, all it's right. always a pleasure. All right, we'll be back with more Body Time right after this.